Hi everybody, in this episode we'll be talking about the universe, its scale, its structure, and everything you need to know. Let's begin. What is the universe? Well, we have a very simple definition. The universe is everything, and this includes all matter, all energy, and all empty space. Now, of course, there's a little bit more to it. In fact, we've recently discovered all sorts of mysterious things like dark matter and dark energy as components of the universe. However, for our purposes, we'll keep it simple. The universe is everything. So how old is the universe? Well, the Big Bang, which is this theory of this rapid expansion that we think formed the universe, is currently estimated to have occurred between 13 and 15 billion years ago. Now, of course, we'll take a closer look at the Big Bang and the evidence to support it in coming days, but for our purposes now, we should be aware that the universe has an estimated age of 13 to 15 billion years old. So what are the components of the universe? What's it made of? What are the structures within it? Well, the universe is composed of these smaller structures, which include galaxies, stars, planets, moons, asteroids, and comets and that would be in order from largest to smallest. And so if we're going to learn about astronomy, we need to be familiar with each of these terms. So our goal here is to get a basic understanding of what each of these terms are and how they fit with each other in terms of the scale and size of the universe. So let's take a look. Let's begin with galaxies. Galaxies are simply clusters or globs of billions of stars held together by gravity. Take a look at these photographs here. These are all actual galaxies. And so what you're looking at, though it's hard to imagine, are these huge expanses of space, thousands of light years across, containing literally hundreds of billions of stars, all held together and in, mo in motion around the center. They have a telltale shape, which is part of the classification of galaxies, which we'll look at coming up. For today, let's just remember that a galaxy is this massive structure made of billions of stars. Speaking of stars, what is a star? Well, a star is a very large ball of gas. Generally starts out as hydrogen, and these balls of gas are able to create their own energy, their own light and heat, through a process known as nuclear fusion. On the left you see the sun, in the center you see a distant red giant star which is beginning to die and on the right you see a blue supergiant star which is also in the process of ending its life. We're going to learn all about the details of stars and how they change over their life cycles in coming days. The key to understand for now is that they actually create heat and energy through this nuclear fusion process which turns light elements like hydrogen into heavier elements like helium. Now we'll move on to planets. Everyone knows the word planet, but it's actually a very tricky thing to define. We'll stick to a simple definition here in saying that planets are nearly spherical objects that orbit or move around a star. I say nearly spherical because we are yet to discover a planet that is a perfect sphere. Every planet is slightly oval in shape, though they generally are close to being spherical, and we'll learn about why that is later on in the course. Here are some photos of some planets. On the left, of course, I hope this is familiar, this will be the Earth. In the center is another planet from our solar system, this is Saturn. And on the right is an interesting drawing of what we think this recently discovered planet called Kepler-22b actually looks like. This actually represents a new field in astronomy, which is known as the search for the exoplanets. These are planets that are not in our solar system, that are very, very distant, moving around other stars. We're particularly interested in Kepler-22b seen here because it has a lot in common with the Earth, and we think that it might actually have liquid water on the surface. And of course, if you're searching for life, we gen generally will look for liquid water because it's so important to the life that exists on our planet. What about moons? Well, a moon is similar to a planet with one key difference. While planets move around stars, moons move around planets. 
They are fairly large, nearly spherical objects, but they orbit planets. Here you see some of the moons in our solar system. Of course, the one on the left will be our moon, which orbits the Earth. In the center, you see the planet Jupiter and two of its many moons, uh, Io and Ganymede, which orbit Jupiter. And on the right, you see a smaller moon, which is called Titan. This is one of the moons of Saturn. Titan is interesting because it's actually where we think there might be life within our solar system, which is interesting because many people assume life has to be on a planet. But who's to say life can't exist on a moon? What about asteroids? Well, an asteroid is different because an asteroid is generally smaller. However, there are some very large ones. And they're not close to being spheres. They're irregular and rocky. They will orbit a star. And they often will do that orbit, complete that orbit, with many other asteroids in these large belts. So on the left in the center, you see photographs of actual asteroids from our solar system. And on the right, you see a depiction, a drawing, of one of the asteroid belts within our solar system. This particular one is meant to show the asteroid belt that exists between the planets Mars and Jupiter, which kind of separates the inner planets from the outer planets. Finally, we come to comets. Comets are often referred to as being dirty snowballs because they are masses of ice and dust and dirt and rock that orbit a star along very, very oval paths, very elliptical orbits. Comets are, uh, have this very common characteristic, which is this glowing tail of these sublimating gases as it flies through the cosmos. Here you, three, you see three comets orbiting the sun. On the right is probably the most famous, Halley's Comet. So now that we know what all these components are, how does all of this fit together? Well, let's begin here by looking at the largest, the universe. The universe is everything. So this is, of course, the biggest thing we've talked about. Getting a little bit smaller, the universe will be made up of billions and billions of galaxies. Okay, so each of those little dots you see in the universe picture are actually individual galaxies. There are billions of galaxies out there. Each galaxy is composed of solar systems. Now, a solar system includes a star and whatever is orbiting around that star. In, for example, our solar system has the sun in the center, the eight planets and comets and asteroids and other materials orbiting it, and all of that can, is what our solar system is. So each galaxy, we think, has billions of solar systems in it. And of course, each solar system contains one, sometimes more than one, star, which act as the center of gravity for that solar system. So in the case of our solar system, the sun is our center of gravity in that everything is orbiting it. Stars are generally orbited by different objects, which we've discussed, planets, asteroids, and comets. They all move around stars. And then finally, we have moons. Planets may or may not have one or more moons orbiting around it. So you see this kind of flow chart here from large to small. Universe is the largest, then we get galaxies and solar systems and stars, and then smaller objects like planets, asteroids, and comets, and moons. So that's our quick look at the universe for today. Thanks for listening.